thank you very much for participating. Look forward to your emails every week, and I'll answer a couple of those emails in just a minute. Uh, we're in uh, the, what we call the budget season, mostly the month of March for the Senate to adopt a budget, the House about the same time, then it goes to conference between the House and Senate, and so I suppose it'll be sometime in April before we actually get the final budget. The budget is a congressional product and a congressional instrument. It never goes to the president. It is the outline of what we intend to do on the appropriation bills and on tax policy. It's the actual appropriation bills and the tax policy that becomes a bill that will be passed by both houses of Congress and go to the president for signature. The president has nothing to do with the congressional budget policy, but since 1922, the president of the United States has exercised what we call executive uh, budget power. Uh, prior to that, Congress used to uh, just think up itself what money ought to be spent in, on this program and that program and create a program or not create a program. And when the president uh, signed all those budget or all those appropriation bills, that tended to be the budget for the federal government. But in 1922-23, the Office of Management and Budget was set up and the president was given the power to propose his uh, expenditures to the Congress of the United States. So last uh, week, uh, President Obama did what other presidents have done since 1922, present a budget. Now this is a relatively small document uh, with the philosophy behind his budget. Pretty soon we will get uh, a, maybe a document that thick or maybe that thick with all the figures in it for the various programs that the president is going to say X number of dollars should be spent on this program, X number of dollars on this program, and X number of dollars on that program. That is the president's budget that Congress can ignore, build on, uh, change, anything we want to do to it, we can. That's called the appropriation process coming down the road between now and September. What we do with the budget process in the Congress of the United States during March, adopting our own budget, it is the outer limits of what Congress can spend on all the various appropriation bills. Without that uh, budget policy, which has only been in place since 1977, uh, you have a situation where before that, it was kind of like uh, the budget before we had a presidential uh, involvement in proposing spending. Each appropriation committee would appropriate X number of dollars, you add them up at the end of the year, and that was what we spent. There wasn't much discipline to it. Uh, with, a, uh, con with a congressional budget document, it brings a certain amount of discipline to the process because if anybody wants to go over that amount, it's subject to a budget point of order and, and it takes an extraordinary 60% vote uh, to, to move ahead uh, spending more. And so it's brought considerable discipline to the Congress, but I know as taxpayers, when you see the Congress deficit spending uh, so much as we do, then you wonder whether there's much discipline. Well, there's more discipline than before. There still isn't enough budget discipline. What we're working on this year, what we're working on this week on the floor of the Senate, is the, the appropriation bills for the rest of the year. By October 1st, we're supposed to have all of the appropriation bills passed. We only got passed for Veterans Affairs, for defense and for homeland security. The other eight items were put together in a continuing resolution and, uh, and uh, for a short period of time extended spending that we did last year to March of this year. So we have to finish out the seven months of this year. That's what we call the omnibus appropriation bill. And how it differs from what decisions we made in last October well, uh, you know what Secretary or Speaker Pelosi said, uh, we won the election, we write the bills. And so they've decided to jack up by 8% the level of expenditure that we had for the first five months of the year. I think it's too much. Maybe in some areas I'd say it's about right. In other areas, uh, maybe way too much. 
uh, in some areas. Maybe I'd even spend a little bit more, but you don't have that choice a whole lot except by amendments you offer. So the bottom line of it is usually voted up or down. And right now I'm inclined to vote down. Next week uh, I'll have a chance to tell you exactly how I voted. Uh, I, ha I go now to our uh, email that has come in, and the first email is from uh, Brett at Alvord. Uh This is what impact will the administration's decisions to move the census out of Commerce Department have on redistricting? Well, if the Senate is done in an intellectually honest way, it won't make any difference. But the impression is that there's going to be political manipulation of the budget. And if there is political manipulation by the people in power of the White House, it will be to get more illegal immigrants counted uh, uh, and, and in the process of counting more, probably uh, get uh, the cities more representation, which in turn gets more Democrats elected to the Congress of the United States. Uh, I hope it's done in an intellectually honest way. Quite frankly, I hope the president reverses himself and put it back uh, in the Commerce Department. After all, their own person is Secretary of Commerce. They shouldn't have any doubts about uh, it being conducted in a, in a fair way so it doesn't benefit either Republicans or Democrats. My uh, last question is uh, Willa uh, of, uh, no, I'm sorry, that's William of Marshalltown. Uh, how do you prevent H-1B visa holders from taking jobs Americans are qualified for? Well, H-1B is legal immigration, usually in the managerial engineering class. Uh, uh, obviously, if we need workers we don't have in the United States, we want workers, we'd rather work here than in some other country, then we ought to let them come in. And I'm for them coming in. But uh, we have found an awful lot of fraud in the program. And the idea of the Durbin-Grassley bill, that's a bipartisan bill, is to take the fraud out of it. Uh, and one other thing as well, and probably more important, and that is that before an H-1B worker can come in and, and do a job here in the United States, that the company hiring them makes a good faith effort to prove that, uh, prove if necessary, but a good faith effort short of uh, proving if they aren't investigated, that they've made an effort to find American workers that can do that. And only then can they use an H-1B program. So it needs to be very dramatically reformed and Senator Durbin and I are in the process of doing that. I hope that you will look at MySpace, Facebook, my website, write me letters, uh, email me, uh, however you can do it, because we need to make the process of representative government work. And I'll be back next week to answer a couple more questions by email. The rest will answer by postal mail.